welcome to Bite and Shoe. I'm a classically trained chef as well as educator, and I'm here to show you tips and tricks to help you become a better baker. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. I release new videos out every week. In last week's video, I showed you how to make a lilac syrup and three of my favorite cocktails. If you missed that video, click on the link here. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to make a sparkling wine or hedgerow champagne. I'm going to be using lilac blossoms, but you can use this method to make elderflower champagne. I've done this in the past and it's worked beautifully. This sparkling wine is light and refreshing and it's easy to make. It just takes a little bit of time. You'll also need some special tools like flip top glass bottles and I'll show you in the link in the description. Stay to the end of this video as I show you how to turn this champagne into a quick and simple cocktail. Cheers. Harvest the blossoms at the beginning of the day when the blooms are fresh and more of the natural yeast is still present on the blossoms. This yeast will aid in natural fermentation. Pick your blossoms, being sure to avoid any wilted flowers. This recipe works beautifully with elderflowers. Elderflowers are in season the first week of July in Canada, so give this recipe a try. In a pot, combine water and half of your sugar. Bring to a boil to create a thin syrup. In a large mixing bowl, combine the remaining sugar with honey. Add your hot syrup and stir to dissolve. Allow the mixture to cool and pour into a sanitized glass container or bucket. Stir in your lemon juice or apple cider vinegar and cold water. Once the liquid is cooled, add your blossoms. Cover the container with a clean towel or cheesecloth. Allow it to sit at room temperature for two days to begin fermentation. If at the end of the two days you do not see any bubbling activity, you can add a small pinch of yeast to help speed the fermentation. If you don't have access to champagne yeast, a little baker's yeast can also work. Over the course of the two days, stir the mixture with a clean whisk once a day. As the lilac champagne ferments, the champagne will become a beautiful blush color. To prepare your bottles, sanitize cleaned bottles with boiling water. Fill the bottles with boiling water and let sit for five minutes. Drain the water and allow the bottles to cool. Fill the bottles with the champagne and seal. I left a link in the description on the flip top bottles I used. I recommend picking up extra seals for the bottles as they are for one time use only. Fill your bottles with champagne stopping two inches from the top. Allow the bottles to continue to ferment at room temperature for seven days. I burp my bottles twice during the seven day fermentation to release any gas. If you are uncomfortable with using glass bottles, you can also use sterilized plastic soda bottles that can expand a bit during the fermentation process. I stored my bottles in a large bucket with a heavy towel to cover. In my research, I have seen some bottles develop a large amount of fermentation. By burping the bottles and covering them, you will reduce the chance of any small accidents. Transfer the bottles to the fridge to continue fermenting for an additional seven days. The champagne will be ready to drink at this time, but will continue to develop and get better in time. This champagne was made three and a half weeks ago. It is clear with a blush tint from the lilacs. It is effervescent and delicately sweet. At approximately four to five percent alcohol, it makes for a refreshing low alcohol drink. Enjoy it on its own chilled in a champagne flute. I also love to enjoy it with a scoop of raspberry rose sorbet as it makes for the perfect compliment. 
Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to share with you my raspberry rose sorbet recipe. For next week's video, I'm going to show you how to make a classic summertime dessert. See you then! You see them? Ah!